Now it's time to see where MATLAB really shines, which is in doing linear algebra on matrices and vectors. MATLAB actually stands for Matrix Laboratory, and in the 1980s when it was first designed, it was actually just a package for doing calculations in linear algebra. It has since grown significantly since then, but its capacity to work with linear algebra is amazing. The first thing I'm going to do is create a vector. And let's say I want to create a vector that is one row by three columns, whose entries are one, two, and three. Just like declaring a variable, I start with a name, v equals. And now I have to use square brackets. Square brackets are how MATLAB indicates that we're dealing with either a vector or a matrix. I want a row vector that is one row by three columns. So I use either a space or a comma between the elements. For example, one space, two space, three, close it off with square brackets again, and I get the vector one, two, three. Let's say that I wanted a column vector. Here, unfortunately, MATLAB reuses the semicolon. If I want to separate columns in a vector or a matrix, I use the semicolon between the elements. I'll show you. W is a new vector whose elements are one, then on a new row, preceded by a semicolon, two, three. And you get this matrix here. Notice how I said the word matrix. It's because MATLAB knows how to multiply vectors and you get matrices out. So for example, if I want to do the product W times V, which will produce for me a three by three matrix, I can do that simply by typing W times V. In fact, MATLAB does not distinguish between vectors and scalars and matrices. So what we can do with MATLAB is extend all of our mathematics right into linear algebra without having to worry about special packages or downloading different functions. It just works. I can now clear the screen with CLC. And let's say I want to make a matrix. In particular, let's make a two by two matrix, mainly because typing out the matrix will take a long time. When we get to scripting in MATLAB, we'll learn that there are easier ways to read matrices, say for example, from a file. We use the syntax that we just learned. A matrix can be thought of as a series of vectors stacked on top of each other. So we specify the matrix row by row. Once we're done specifying a single row, we put a semicolon to indicate we're going to the next row. Let me show you. M equals, and square brackets again. Now let's say I want a matrix whose elements are one and two on the first row and three and four on the second. I will type one space two, because remember spaces separate elements on a row. Then I'll put a semicolon in to indicate that it's a new row, three, four. I will close off my matrix and hit enter, and I get M. There's a huge amount you can do with matrices and vectors, but remember that matrices and vectors still have to follow the rules of matrix and vector multiplication. So let's take a look at V again. I'll put it back on the screen. I could never compute the product M times V. They're all the wrong size. Let's see what MATLAB says when I try. MATLAB gives me an error. And specifically it says error using times. Inner matrix dimensions must agree. This isn't a MATLAB error, it's a mathematics error. A two by two simply cannot multiply a one by three. MATLAB has all of that built in and it will give you these errors. On the other hand, if you'd like to see a real MATLAB error, I might type in a variable that doesn't exist. Let's try to print the name of a variable that does not exist. What should happen is I'll get an error. And in fact, I do. This is now a MATLAB error. It isn't mathematics, it's just programming. I didn't declare or define any variable called does not exist, and MATLAB told me so. So, in this video we learned how to make vectors and matrices. In the next video, we're going to learn how to write scripts in MATLAB, so we don't need to keep relying on the command line.